When the British TV show Downton Abbey aired on PBS, it did more than draw viewers. It drew viewers who became passionate fans. Millions of them turned out this past weekend and made the new Downton Abbey film the number one movie in the U.S. One member of the cast is Jim Carter, who plays the rather buttoned up butler, Mr. Carson. Now in real life, Jim Carter is anything but buttoned up. 207's Caroline Cornish talked with him a few years ago when he was at the Music Hall in Portsmouth doing a benefit magic show for an organization he co-founded called Wand Aid. And Caroline asked him what he knew about magic. Well, we have the odd party, you know, um, being actors, we're fond of a party. So there'd be <laughs> the odd party or uh, evening in the pub when a bit of magic might come out. But n not on the set, really, you know, because there were gimlet-eyed housekeepers from, the, from mm. Highclere Castle keeping an eye on the silverware. Oh, and, so uh, they really did keep an eye on you? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, no, no, we couldn't move anything without their say-so. And these ladies with white gloves would come and carefully move the flower arrangement or the lamp, you know, because, I mean, there's, some, there's a painting in there worth eight million pounds, oh. you know, 12 million dollars or something like that. So, um, so this was real. Yeah, so you all the criminals it. of the world get around. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know where to go. <laughs> no, no, this was real. So we, we obviously, you know, we, we had to be very careful of the, the fabric of the place. Was there any moment that you wish that Mr. Carson could have had on the show that he didn't get to have if you if you were to have one more season? that you would uh, like for him? Um, nothing. I would like to have seen Carson on a day off, really, mm. because he always works. We always see him at work. And I always wondered, what would he do with a day off? Would he go fishing? Would he talk to the gardener? Would he get drunk? I mean, who, who knows? So, <laughs> Mr. Carson drunk might have been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so uh, I, would, uh, I think that would have been nice, because it would have been nice just to see a little bit, you know, him off duty a little bit more. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that would have been nice, yeah. And mm. do you have a particular moment, other than probably the very last episode, which was, I'm sure, very oh, emotional for everybody, me. but a moment that awesome. you will always speaking. cherish with you forever about taping this show? Uh, yeah, yeah. There is one moment, and it's, um, I think it's in s series three, when Lady Mary is about to get married to Matthew Crawley, and she comes down the stairs in her lovely white wedding dress uh, in the Great Hall there, and there's Lord Grantham, Hugh Bonneville and I waiting, looking up at her, and she says, will I do, Carson? And, you know, I'm her downstairs dad. Right. And I said, yeah, yeah, very well, my lady. And sort of part of me could imagine my own daughter, you know, sort of, uh, who's now 22, but one day she'll get married possibly. She won't possibly come downstairs as grand as that. So, <laughs> uh, so that, that was a tender moment, just a little moment, but I, I enjoyed that, yeah, I treasured that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, but I've read somewhere now that you're very glad to be leaving the tuxedos behind. Not and, very glad, but yeah. it's, it's time. The time's yeah. right. You, you want to finish before the, the, the stories dry up or you start repeating yourself. So it, it feels right. I mean, it's, been a, it's given us tremendous pleasure, given a lot of people tremendous pleasure. And uh, it, it, it ju just feels, yeah, let's now leave that and, <laughs> and, and go away. And, and it, it's good that people are disappointed and want more, but always leave before you're... Before you're not wanted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You said it, Caroline. Yeah. What makes you laugh? Uh, but it would go. That's <laughs> sorry. Was that difficult? <laughs> My wife makes me laugh. She's uh, the funniest. She's very funny. She's the funniest woman in the world. She makes me laugh a lot. Um, um, I don't know. I, I tell you, uh, Modern Family makes me laugh. Do you ever watch Modern Family? I love Modern Family. It makes me laugh a lot. That yeah. I like that. This is kind of the opposite of Downton. I mean, they're all. <laughs> it's just slightly. Although they've mentioned Downton a few times on Modern Family. Mm. We've got the young, you know, Manny Manny Pritchett uh, watches the marathon. Uh, episodes of Downton Abbey. You know, so so. so it's, it's good to hear that the British people enjoy American television as much as Americans enjoy British yeah, television. We, because TV, I mean, because I'm elderly, you know, so the, the TV hides in, in strange corners of your you know, television set and I can't always find it because it's in some curious channel that's too complicated for me. But things <laughs> like you know, Modern Family, Veep makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. that, that makes me laugh a lot. Um, uh, yeah, and Imelda Staunton. Because she's your wife and she's, she's wonderful. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. I, she won't see this, so I'm just saying this. Well, know, we are online, so yeah. you can send her the link. We don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Friday on 207, we're sitting down with a University of New Hampshire professor who is an expert on 20th century British history. She's also a big fan of Downton Abbey and will explain why you probably wouldn't want to go back to live in that time and place as charming as it may look.